Hi and welcome to another episode of PeaceMag TV. In today's tutorial for Lightroom, I'm going to take you through and show you step by step how to create this vintage photo effect. There's also a completely free preset available for Lightroom on our website. Simply follow the link in the description below, sign up to our newsletter and you can download this free preset to use in Lightroom and use it on your images with just one simple click. So let's load up the original image and start creating this black and white photo effect. Okay, so I've got the image that we're going to work on open in front of me. And what I would say when you're creating this sort of retro effect, it really does work well when you've got images that have strong texture in there. So strong stone textures. We've got this image, you've got the stone texture in the background, you've got a sort of rusty looking vehicle. All of these sort of contrast the edges really work quite well. So the first thing we want to do is come over to the basics panel in the develop module and because we're working with a black and white effect we want to switch this over to black and white mode so we get rid of any color out of there and then we're going to go through we're just going to tweak the image to sort of flatten things down but also bring out some of that contrast and that texture that's in the image so to start off with let's reduce the exposure ever so slightly we'll bring that down to about a third of a stop is probably enough we're going to take our contrast and we're going to give that a boost so we can kind of get some nice strong definition between the tones in the image. So we're going to take that up by about plus 50. With our highlights, we're just going to bring those down ever so slightly. So we're going to bring those down by around about 10 or 12 should do fine. The shadows, we're just going to open those up a little bit. So we're going to increase those by about plus 15, start to flatten the image down a little bit. The whites, we're going to boost those so we can kind of blow out any highlights a little bit, which is kind of very reminiscent of the old cameras that you would have had back in the time with the effect that we're trying to create. So around plus 10, plus 12, something along those lines. And we're going to bring the blacks and we're going to drop those down because we want to sort of take those dark, dark areas and make them sort of not quite as dark. We want to make them like they're on a matte paper. So let's drop that down by about minus 20. And then the next thing we're going to do is just help the definition in this sort of texture area. So we're going to just give it some extra clarity. We're going to take that up to about plus 20, plus 25, somewhere along those lines, just to give it some nice strong contrast between those edges. So there we go. There's our initial starting point. So we're now ready to move on and start adjusting the tone curve in the image where we can really get a little bit creative. So let's just switch over to the tone curve now and let's open that up. Again, like we've done in the previous tutorials, we need to make sure that we're in the point curve mode. And if you're not, you just simply need to click on the little symbol in the right hand corner of the tone curve dialog box. And that'll switch you between the two different modes. When we're in point curve mode, we can now manually create points and edit the actual curve itself very, very quickly and easily. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple of extra points in this. We're going to add an extra two points in there. Don't worry too much where these are at the moment because we're going to adjust the position of those and the curve. But for now, what we're going to do is we want to take the shadow area, the real dark area, and we want to boost those up a little bit. So we're getting rid of some of the blackness. We're making them sort of encroach into the gray area. So we flatten the image down a little bit. So let's grab that, bring that up a little bit. And as you can see, when we do that, if I just before and after, you can see the blacks now start to move out of being black. And we start to flatten the image and get a sort of a real matte effect to it. We're going to take the second point, which is sort of going into towards the mid-tones. We'll give that a little boost up there. I'm not going to go crazy with that. We'll take the second one, which is just a little bit towards the highlights. These are sort of in the grayer areas. And then right at the top where we've got the whites, we're going to bring those down a little bit so we can just take off the edge. So let's take a look at that now. And let's take a look at it before. So you can see we've taken a lot of the contrast and we've given it a lot sort of flatter matte effect. Okay, so that's the tone curve done. We're quite happy with that. Remember, everything is non-destructive. So if you want to make changes to this, you can quickly and easily come in and adjust anything that we're doing. So let's close the tone curve down. And the next thing we want to do is apply some split toning to this. So let's open that up. Now, what we're going to do is we want to give it a sort of slight, slight sepia tint to it. We don't want to go crazy with it. And we can adjust, like I said, we can control the amount of saturation in both the highlights and the shadows in this. So first of all, let's take our highlight hue. We want to take that over to sort of the, the light oranges and the light oranges encroaching in the yellows. So around about the 40 mark, it's kind of getting us into that ballpark. So you can see there, at the moment, nothing's happening because we have the saturation set to zero. So no colors being introduced into the highlights. So let's take that up to around about 15 to 20. And you should start to see that we start to get that little sepia tint to our colors. 
So our highlights are now starting to get that sepia tint. I don't want to go crazy, so I'm going to keep this around about around 15 for now. The next thing, we're going to come in and we're going to add some to the shadows. We want to work with the same color area again, so we're just going to simply take this over to 40, the same as the one above. But we're going to take the saturation, sorry, the, yeah, the saturation now, we're going to take that over. We're going to give this a bit, bit more saturation for the shadows. Let's take that over. Let's give it around 20. Yeah, around 20 looks good to me. So we've got that sort of old sepia tint to it. Now, let's say if you find that this is a little too much, you don't want that much sepia tone in there, then simply come into the saturation for the highlights and the shadows and just bring that back a little bit, dial it back, get it where you want it to be. So next up, we're just going to add a little bit of sharpening to the image. So let's come to the detail panel. And what we're going to do is under sharpening amount, we're going to set this to around 50. Now, obviously, this is the kind of thing that is dependent upon the image you're working with. But if we just sort of zoom in, we can start to see this is going to help the text to start to stand out just that little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to just bump the radius up a little bit to about 1.5. We want to sort of give it that graininess because, like I say, you're talking about cameras from years ago, which weren't that good in the quality they were producing. So detail, we'll, we'll just bump that up to about 40. So it starts to pull out the finer detail and then we'll take the mask in up to about 50. So any of the sort of the large areas that are mostly color and not a lot of detail, they're not going to be sharpened. So we're not going to introduce any kind of artifacts into that. And you can see it sort of smooths out the, the key sort of tones we've got in the image a little bit. So we soften those off. Okay, so that's the sharpening side of things done. And again, you can adjust this to taste if you want to. But finally, what we're going to do is we're going to add a vignette to this because well, let's be honest about it. Most old photographs would have a vignette around them from the way that the lenses worked. So let's just come down to the effect panel. And what we're going to do in there is we're just going to take the amount. We're going to reduce that down and we're going to darken those edges just a little bit. Don't want to go crazy. Take a look at before and after. Let's actually just dial that back just a little bit. It's a bit too much, I think, on this image. Around 20 should do. There we go. That's looking pretty good. And there we go. That's how we create this retro photo effect in Lightroom. So let's just do a quick before and after so we can see what this looks like. So there's the original image and there's our retro look. So hopefully you can see it's been pretty easy to create this. And like I've said before, we've got the free preset you can download from our website. The link is in the description below. If you found the video useful, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. If you didn't enjoy the video, feel free to give it a thumbs down. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else we cover on the channel, please pop those in the comments section below. We'd love to hear from you. We'll try to answer everything that we can. If you do enjoy the tutorials we put out on this channel, please consider popping over to Amazon where you can purchase the new ebook we've released on the Kindle store. Eight Essential Adobe Lightroom Techniques where we go into detail about different techniques that every Adobe Lightroom user should really have in their arsenal. The link is in the description below and your support is much appreciated. Well, until next time, take care.